Welcome to In the Spread. I'm Captain Chad Bryson, and today we're going to talk about my favorite lures, my top five favorite lures for big brown trout. And, you know, again, the way I measure big brown trout is in pounds and not in inches. And a lot of people measure it different ways, but the biggest of the biggest brown trout are always going to be measured in pounds. And in order to understand how to catch those fish, we have to identify with their diet what those fish eat and I've talked about it on my top five favorite flies for fly fishing for big browns and I'm going to touch on it a little bit here but in trout fishing you know there's there's several different levels and, and several different ways that you can pursue trout my favorite is fly fishing but there are some days like today we're here on the Chattahoochee River below Buford Dam the winds blowing 20 it's blowing the boat all over the river and so it's blowing 20 knots you're not really going to enjoy fly fishing too much in this in this kind of wind and if you do try it you're probably going to have some hooks in the back of your head or your buddy's head or something like that you're really not going to catch a lot of fish so on the windy day usually best to just break out a spinning rod and some spinning you know some tackle for spinning rods so that you can really pursue those fish and not give up a fishing day because we all know that the best time to go fishing is any time that you can so We'll go back and, and start identifying with, with how to pursue these fish with spinning tackle or, or even casting, you know, bait casting tackle. Um, starts with identifying what these fish eat. You know, when they're young, they eat insects, they'll eat crawfish, smaller crawfish, and, and a lot of small invertebrates. And But there comes a point in a brown trout's life that it decides to make that switch from eating insects and small invertebrates to actually eating food, something with some protein, something that gives them nourishment, something that grows them into the 12 and 15 pound fish that we all really want to catch them and pursue. So those fish that get that big are not getting that big on insects, they're getting that big by eating other fish. And it's a hard one for a lot of trout fishermen to grasp and understand because we think about the tiny little creeks up in the mountains and the, and the spring creeks and, the, and, and whatnot in the freestone creeks that we all fish and, and, and you know, with the hopes and dreams of catching one that's, you know, might measure 16, 17 inches and that would certainly be a great catch in any of those creeks. But what we're talking about again is big fish really really big fish and how do you catch them and what do you use and so before i start going through the whole thing i want to tell you that this this mission once you get on it this mission is one that you're not going to have a whole lot of fish caught in a day you might have one or two but they're going to be huge and so it's a dedication and a commitment to the sport of how to do it so first and foremost we want to go through the different techniques and, and what these fish eat. So they're eating other, other trout, baby trout, either baby browns or baby rainbows. They're eating shad that may come in from a tributary creek somewhere. Uh, they could be eating perch. They, they could be eating anything that looks like a really good meal. So don't be afraid and to, to try and experiment a whole lot of different stuff, but my personal favorite ways to tar start targeting these fish. This is a Rapala, a jointed Rapala. I think that's a size nine. Yep, that's a J9. And this one's in a baby brown trout color. And any any tailwater river in the southeast, like the Chattahoochee, is going to have a lot of successful brown trout reproduction. And our river here, in, in the young of the year, in the spring, when, when they do the test shocking, there are literally millions of tiny baby brown trout swimming in this river. And so a bigger brown trout, not necessarily a 30 inch fish, but even a 20 inch fish is gonna eat a bait this size. And you'd be amazed at how many big fish that we catch that during the fight, they actually regurgitate other fish that they've recently eaten. So it's not necessarily about bugs or bug hatches. This is about feeding the man what he wants. Yeah, the Rapala, joined the Rapalas give a lot of a lot of vibration, a lot of action, and it's a great way if you can't fly fish for a day to be able to stay in the game. Uh, another one is is again, it's a Rapala, joined the Rapala. This is a J11. 
it's a little one size bigger. Uh, this one's in a perch color. I like the perch color as well as the brown trout because it does replicate a lot of different varieties of bait fish that are in the river. If you looked in my box, you would see this in gold and black, silver and black, the perch as I have here, and the brown trout color, all in 11s and size 9s. And I find that that really seems to work the best because when you go another size bigger, which is the 13, size 13, it has an extra treble hook here. And if you catch and release, which is what I try and advocate in regards to this, that middle set of treble hooks will actually swing around and hook the fish too deep in the gills or on the outside and under, and you'll kill the fish accidentally. Not really intending to, but the fish will bleed out and kill it, and it'll die. So I prefer the 9s and the 11s because it seems to be more friendly to the fish. And then again with the Rapala, this is the x wrap and um, this bait's been out probably for 10 or so years, but this is a suspending bait, and so if you're fishing a, a situation where you got a really long, deep pool, and you want the bait to get down and run a little bit deeper, the x wrap is a great bait to do that with. Gets a lot of action. You can kind of hear the rattle that it, that it has on the inside. Sounds like a bait fish in distress. And again, comes in a lot of different colors. This is olive and white. There's black and white perch, a lot of different colors that you could fish in this, but that's another staple item to my box. And then, you know, the we're going to move right on to swim baits. Swim baits are, are something that's been around for a while, probably 15 or so years, but nobody ever really considered using them for trout because, you know, a lot of times we're, we're fishing for a trout that's this big and nobody really considers that a big brown trout is going to eat another baby trout that this big. This is, this is your size, your standard size of a stocked rainbow trout in the Chattahoochee River. Maybe a little bit bigger, but as an average, this is a, a good average size to use. And so we have a swim bait here that looks really, really realistic, just like a rainbow trout. Swims like a rainbow trout in the river and in a deep hole, deep pool somewhere. This is a great bait of choice, and obviously you're going to want to gear up a little bit. And that's something that you might check out one of our other videos on to talk about the gear, you know, the rods, the reels, the line, how to connect the knots and how to tie everything. We cover that really thoroughly in another one of our videos, so you might check that out. But the rainbow trout type swim bait is a really good choice, and there's a, they're expensive. They're not cheap. Uh, this one's like 30 bucks at retail. So you can invest a lot of money really quick in this, but when times get hard and you really want to pursue the big fish, this is a great way to do it. There's a lot of manufacturers out there that do it in a soft plastic. This is Castaic in a, uh, in a shad pattern that works really well. Lots of action, easy to cast and fish. This is a storm, this is a storm bait. Uh, and again, it's got a little lip on it like a crankbait, but just a soft plastic swim bait type pattern. And uh, this one's in gizzard shad, and it seems to work really good at creek mouths and, and that sort of thing where a warm water tributary is coming into the river that, that would hold naturally hold a warm water fish. And in the wintertime a lot, I'll use these shad patterns at those creek mouths because what happens is the creek gets colder than the tailwater portion of the river itself. And so the shad being a warm water fish, even if the river, if, even if the main river is only two to three degrees warmer than what the creek is, that's a big difference for the fish. And so they'll come out to that main, main part of the river to hang out where a lot of big browns are gonna be gobbling up those fish. So that brings me, we've, we've covered a lot here. The, these baits are expensive. They're a staple item in my boxes. I have to have them, but they are expensive, especially the swim baits are very expensive. And if you lose one, it's a problem and you're not going to like it. Nobody likes to lose a $30 bait, but it does happen. So the next one I'm going to show you is the economical version of, of what we're talking about here. And quite truthfully, it, it has as good or better action than anything I've showed you so far. And it's it's something that I had kind of forgot. I knew it 
once I knew about this once before, but I'd kind of forgotten about it. And on a recent trip to Homosassa with Captain William Tony, I was kind of reminded really subtly and gently of, of this type of rig and how effective it can be um, to, to pursue big fish. And so it's a, it's a really simple program. This is a Zoom Super Fluke in pearl white right there. I don't get paid by Zoom. I don't get paid by anybody except for the people that hire me for, for guide trips. But, you know, Zoom is a good Georgia-based company. They make a great product, and I've used it for years uh, and now using it a lot for trophy brown trout fishing. So what this rig is, this is a super fluke rig in pearl white with an owner, or I'm sorry, not an owner, Gamakatsu Octopus 2 all hook. And you basically rig it right through the nose. You can go up from the bottom, you can go to the side, down from the top, however you want to do it. It doesn't really matter. The key to the whole rig is that you tie the loop knot in the eye of the hook. And everything, the bait, the eye of the hook, and the line have to be running perfectly straight. It's got to be a straight line. Otherwise, the bait's just going to swim in a circle and twist your line up. So if everything runs in a straight line, everything's going to swim right. And so what you have, kind of similar to what my, my big articulated trout flies are, what you have is a double articulation with the hook and the line. And the action that this, that this guy puts off in the water is absolutely incredible. And anybody can fish it. it, it does, it's not rocket science it, at all. And despite the fact that the hook point is exposed, it's really pretty weedless. And, and especially in our rocky rivers that, that we're gonna pursue brown trout in, it's really pretty weedless. And even if you do get it hung up and you have to break your line, at the end of the day, you've lost one fluke and one hook, which probably doesn't cost you any more than about 80 cents to a dollar as compared to losing a $30 swim bait. Now, both of them have their place, and both of them certainly work, but most any of us will have a six to seven foot medium light action rod, 12 pound class, that you can run 12 pound fluorocarbon on and achieve that action. And so we've caught a lot of fish on those over the past few months, and I went ahead and took it a step further and downsized the whole thing because a lot of our freestone rivers up in the mountain, up in the Georgia mountains, have big brown trout. They may not have a 12 or 15 pounder, but they have big brown trout in them and they still eat the small bait fish. And so for the, for the folks that have an ultralight rod that want to that wanna test the same thing, this is a Super Flute Junior, again made by Zoom. This one's in albino shad. You can use whatever color you like. Doesn't really seem to matter too much. Uh, I personally find that I like the pearl white and the and the shad type patterns. Uh, this I'm sorry, this is a rainbow shad. I think I called it an albino, but either way, this pattern works. It's a little, it's downsized. The bait itself is downsized in comparison to the super fluke to the junior. And I'm doing this again with the gamakatsu octopus one off hook and the fluorocarbon tied with the loop knot at the end of the eye and everything's running in a nice straight line and you can fish this exactly the same way that you fish the bigger bait and you're doing it with a, a little smaller rod a little smaller bait and a little smaller river and you're still targeting the big king of that river no matter where you are and it's again you know if you lose one of these you haven't even lost a dollar so uh, but i fish these a lot on the chattahoochee and they really do work so that's the idea at in the spread is to try and give you the information so that you can go out and duplicate that day on your own and you can see here the winds blowing the boats rocking and it's a no fly fishing day at i mean completely a no fly fishing day so I hope this helps, and uh, check out our other videos, and hope to fish with you soon. Thanks.